Hey y'all, this is Tony Paradis. I'm a licensed dietitian and personal trainer with Food and Fitness. And today I'm going to talk to you about nutrition periodization for cycling. Uh, nutrition periodization for cycling is very important because you also use periodization, which in other words is a long-term approach to training uh, with planning. With your cycling, uh, you also need that to reflect in your nutrition aspect as well. And so I'll be covering some points over that. Uh, I'll be giving you guys some details as to how it can benefit you, and then an overall uh, general program of how to fit nutrition periodization um, into your cycling training regimen. So let me go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. So we get a little bit closer to my whiteboard of science. Okay, so first of all, um, fat loss nutrition is not the same as performance nutrition, and a lot of people think, okay, if I'm losing fat, you know, that must be healthy. I can do that during the race season. This is absolutely uh, contradictory toward what you want to be achieving during the, the race season. And let me go ahead and explain why. Uh, first of all, fat loss is when you're losing fat, you're in a catabolic metabolic state. And catabolism is another word for breakdown. Okay? So when you're in breakdown mode, you have a decrease in energy. You have a decrease in recovery. And even if you do your best to maintain your muscle mass, you're going to have some muscle mass loss in any time that you're losing fat. And this also decreases your ability to exercise uh, with enough volume. Okay, So this is completely the opposite of what we want during the on-season training period where you're going to be cycling your hardest, where you're going to need maximum ability to recover, and you're going to want enough energy to help not only support your training, but prevent injury and prevent overtraining. Okay? So fat loss is not what we want during the on season. What fat loss, why would we want to lose fat then? Okay? Why? What's, what's the reason behind it? Fat loss equals an increase in your power to weight ratio. Okay? Also, from a practical standpoint, fat loss is a lot less expensive than buying new equipment. Okay, If you want to shave 20 pounds off your equipment, how much is that going to cost you? How many thousands of dollars is that going to cost you if you still have 20, 20 pounds to lose off of your fat? So there you have a practical application. So why fat loss might be important to you as well. Uh, let me use this visual as kind of a demonstration. Uh, this individual here has 140 pounds of lean body mass. So that's 140 pounds of bones, muscle, all those things that we want to stay constant, and 40 pounds of fat. Therefore, this person has roughly 29, 30% body fat, and that's what we're looking at. So for 140 pounds of muscle, they're carrying an extra 40 pounds of mass on that body that is not functional for making the bike pedal any faster. Your muscles what helps you pedal the bike faster and sustain that. Okay, so if we take that same individual and maintain that same 140 pounds of lean body mass, but we lose a significant amount, a significant uh, amount of fat from 40 pounds to 15 pounds total on that body. Okay, so you can see here as visualized by the red that this person now has 11% body fat. So what does this translate to on the bike? Well, first of all, this translates to a, de a decrease in resistance from gravity. So when you're negotiating a hill, you have less gravitational force pushing you back down because you have less mass on your body. So by simple physics, you're going to be able to pedal with more ease to be able to get up a hill. For example, where gravitational resistance is going to be a big issue there. Uh, number two you have decreased effort to maintain power. Okay, So you don't have to work as hard to move somebody with 15 pounds of fat and 140 pounds of lean mass. So in other words, a total weight of 155 pounds is much easier than trying to move somebody with a total weight of 180 pounds. So your effort to maintain power, to maintain power uh, you don't require as much effort. This is going to help increase your acceleration. By the same principle of, of moving less mass, you're going to be able to, easier to accelerate, to, to attack, 
when you're on the road when you have less weight that you have to move. And then finally, this is one that most people don't realize, but this will help with decreasing your wind resistance. So as you can see here in the visual, that this person has a much greater surface area that is going to have the wind blowing on them, while this person here only has 15 pounds of fat, is going to have a smaller body, a smaller frame, and therefore less wind resistance when you're trying to get aerodynamic on the bike. Okay, so we know that fat loss does not equal performance nutrition. Uh, we talked about some benefits of that, but how should we program fat loss into the nutrition periodization cycle into your overall training regimen uh, for the cycling on and off season? Well, here's an example, and this could work for you guys. So during the off season, this, the off season is the time when you want to recomposition your body when you want to change your body mass, either for muscle gain or fat loss. Okay, So during the off season, for you guys that have some extra fat to lose and you ladies that have some extra fat to lose, this is where you're going to focus on that because your training regimen is where you're building base miles, it's not as strenuous as the on season, and you have more uh, wiggle room to experiment with things. This is where we want to lose our fat. Okay. Now during the preseason or or build our muscles. So let me go back to that. If if you are underweight, okay, and if you have a position where you're needing to sprint more or you're needing to put on more muscle around the legs, if if that's been your problem, then during the off season you're going to want to spend some time building up some muscle, okay, at a, at an appropriate rate. And then if you do have any fat left over over from that in the second half of the off season, so I, so I could even. I can even split the off season up in half where the first part would be muscle building and the second part would be fat loss. Would be that time period, that macro cycle that you would want to focus on that adaptation. Okay? Now during the preseason, so a few weeks or maybe even a month leading up to your races, or even if you have your less important races kind of early in the season, this is where you're going to want to tweak your um, your nutrition protocol for a maintenance phase. So we're getting out of either fat loss or muscle gain, and now what we're trying to do is we're trying to maintain homeostasis. We're trying to maintain uh, a weight that we're going to race with all season long. Okay, and the reason for this is because you want to have number one enough energy to recover. Okay, but you do, but you also don't want to gain weight um, because you don't want to be putting on extra mass. Uh, which will come with a little bit of extra fat as well. And then we also talked about why we don't want to lose weight. So we're moving toward maintenance. D during the preseason, this is your time to tweak things and see where you land for maintenance. You are going to have some initial uh, weight gain at first when you cycle off of your fat loss regimen because you're going to have an influx of muscle glycogen, you're going to have an influx of water, and these things are okay. Okay, but what we want to see is we want to see that stable out. So during that initial preseason phase is where we're going to play with those numbers and do a little bit of uh, self research, self experimentation to see where that fits in. You don't want to be doing this weeks leading into until um, your most important races. And then finally, during the, r the racing season, this is where we're going to lock and dial in that weight maintenance so that you can get used to racing at that weight, so you don't have to worry about the decrease in energy, recovery, muscle mass, all those things that come with fat loss, and also the increase in body fat that would come with weight gain. So we can have very predictable um, power output, helps you with your pacing, helps you with your strategy, with the, the weight maintenance. But most of all, it helps you with your energy. And this is where we're also going to be cycling and focusing on performance nutrition, which is an entirely different um, method or protocol for nutrition than would be fat loss. So guys, if you have any questions or you have any comments, leave them down below in the comment box. Um, if you got any topics you'd like me to cover, let me know. Please like this video. Please share this video on your social media, on your Facebook. 
My name is Tony Paradis. I'm a sports dietitian and personal trainer with Food and Fitness here in Flower Mound. Today we talked about nutrition periodization for you cyclists and how to maximize your racing potential in the off season, in the on season, and some of the benefits that come with fat loss. So thanks for watching and check out my other videos. This is one part of a series of videos I'm going to be doing and specifically for cycling nutrition. So stay tuned and once I get those up, I'll, I'll link those here in the video and down below. Thanks.